price and ethnic group, a race of marginalized people. And um, when he was asked to be, when he was, when, when he was appointed prophet and messenger of God and asked to go and uh, speak on behalf of his marginalized race, the Israelites, the Jews, as we know them today. He was worried at the enormity of the task of speaking for a marginalized, a heavily marginalized people. Some of the most, the most ever marginalized people you can have in history. And the Jews of the people of the, of the Pharaoh, we call him Pharaoh. He asked, he prayed to God, using this prayer. God, oh, please expand. I, I, I pray, God, I beseech you to expand my chest, to loosen my tongue, to, to support me, to be able to speak what pleases you, what is of use, as it were, to, to the Pharaoh, to the oppressors. You understand? Hello? Hello? Are we on? We can hear you. We can hear you. Please All go right. ahead. Okay. Uh, so it is a prayer, a common prayer for us whenever you are speaking in public or, 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 or when you are, whenever you are addressing a given topic. But its history is from someone who was the leader of an oppressed people, of the marginalized people, the Jews. They had, they, had, they, had, they had no rights. They, they were the lowest of the law. They were the hewers of wood, the, those who fetch water. Those, they, were, they were literally slaves in their own land to the extent that at a stage there was a decree that every single male child they delivered, delivered of the Jews would be slaughtered. And they were. And Moses was one of those who who was slated for slaughter, but who, who wasn't slaughtered, who emerged because it was God's design for him to show an example of the situation for subsequent people coming for, for us. That was a marginalized community that was living under the tyranny of the Pharaoh who was so tyrannical that he was not only using them as cheap labor to build his pyramids, to, build, to do infrastructure work for him, but also using, using them to be the slaves and the laborers and whatever. As I said, they had no rights. That is what marginalization is about. To come back to our to your question, now we understand my definition, my understanding of marginalization of a people, of an ethnicity. We are all Nigerians and uh, a sizable of us may have traveled abroad to other countries or in Africa or in uh, the Middle East or in Europe or North America, right? And uh, we see how communities live. We see the kinds of systems that operate. What kind of system do we operate? We operate a system in Nigeria that allows for every community to have a turf, an area that it can call its own to be in control of that area, to have resources to manage themselves, to manage their lives in those areas. Today, we are governed by a constitution. I don't like the constitution. Many, many people don't like the constitution. I don't like the kind of operation that we have. But that is not reason enough for me to say, because I don't like it, or because it doesn't suit my 
my thoughts that I, I, I will just start crying marginalization. Especially when the constitution is clear as to how we live with one another. We have uh, maybe 300, 500 you know, tribes and uh, ethnic groups and whatever all over the country. Most of them in the north, especially in the northeast. L like, despite that, we have what? We have principally, we have three regions the north, the southwest, mm -hmm. and the southeast, which grew to the north, the southwest, the midwest, and the southeast, and then grew to 12 regions, as it were, states then. After similar, similar cases of, in my view, what is in my view, uh, crying wolf that happened, that led to the dismantling of the structure that existed, that was serving, that was serving uh, reasonably well, the purposes of the people of Nigeria of those days in the 1960s. Then we had six states up north, six states in the south. I, I believe in three in the southwest and uh, maybe three in the uh, southeast, southeast and, and the uh, three, three, two, and, uh, and the Midwest, 12 states. And in, even under the military, those states were governed by governors who lived with the people of those states that they administered, who administered the states with commissioners, with a system that was homegrown. In such a situation, how can how can we how can we speak of marginalization? Unless it is something else I don't understand. If my answer of marginalization is the kind of marginalization I have seen in history of uh, Prophet Moses, alayhi salam, and the kind of marginalization I uh, we we know we heard of when our brothers and sisters were were sold into slavery to the Europeans, when they would even have uh, padlocks on their mouth so that they don't chew the sugar cane or whatever it is they grew for their masters. They they had no rights at all as as blacks they were marginalized just like the red indians had no rights when the europeans came and uh, occupied their land and uh, eliminated them and left only a, a, a certain percentile in uh, literally in zoos in uh, what do they call them uh, something like concentration camps reserves or whatever in the, the, the Indian settlements, red Indian settlements. They are called red Indians when they are actually the Americans. Now, that is marginalization for the red Indians and for the black Americans who were shipped out, shipped out of our countries through our foolishness and um, the greed of uh, some of us. And of course, the overriding greed of the oppressing Europeans who came out of their countries to harvest uh, people, to go and serve them, for them to have a good life. And over there, of course, they had no rights. Now in Nigeria, after the 12 states, when we had 19 states, at a stage we had 30, I think, and then we now have 36. And we have the Federal Capital Territory, which to all and purposes is more or less a state much like Lagos as the former capital is now a state, much like uh, Kaduna, the former capital of the North, uh, is now a state itself, I'm broken into two states, um, one half Katsina, one half Kaduna. And uh, in the system that is operational now, the presidential, the presidential system, which is not representative enough, considering the kind of uh, 
powers that are vested in the chief executives. You have, um, you have, you 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 have. Unfortunately, we have unfortunately um, people only thirty six people and uh, thirty seven the president with powers to do and undo. And uh, that is much unlike what we are used to before the coming of the Europeans, the colonial before colonial rule, at least up here, and uh, after colonial rule when we operated a parliamentary format where we had representatives, representatives who had to go back to speak to their people, to get their mandate, to speak for them, to work for them and in the parliament and in the executive where they are members of the executive also as members of parliament and any member of parliament, any representative from all over, from wherever you are in Nigeria can become the president, non-executive in, in those days, can become the prime minister, could have become the deputy prime minister, could have become a minister. And if that, and, and, and in the regions too, that was what operated, what was obtainable, right? Now, with, uh, with, uh, with, with, with the presidential system, which I don't like, this over-centralized, so terribly dictatorial executive presidential system, you either are with the president or with the governor in your state, or you are not. If you are with them, and then you can be a member of parliament, the houses of assembly. We call them an amshin shata, simple choristers in a, uh, who, who, who hardly have any views of their, of their own. Even in the days when we had uh, strong national assemblies, they were not really strong because at the end of the day, to even breathe more or less, to, 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 to pay bills, pay, to, to, to have electricity, to have security, they had to have the hand of the executive because the executive has been given all the powers. Okay, Mr. Gwangwenso. Yep. We'll come back to talk about um, the system of government later, but I'm just trying to structure the interview so we don't get um, off point in a way. But before, before, before I go to my next question, is it possible to keep your camera steady? Because it's taking, it's taking a lot. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me, 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 let me try to do so. Okay. Okay, I think this is better. This is, I think, this, this is I think it's enough. enough. Even if uh, you don't have the whole of my profile. Okay. Are we yes. are we good to go? Yes, this is good to go. So, um, like I said, we'll come back to the system of government. Um, Nigeria is currently practicing later, but I just want to ask you this: If you believe that no region is marginalized in currently Nigeria, why do you think there's an increase in the agitation for balkanization? Good question. I'll go back again to the marginalization thing. Why to say why we are not marginalized? Why nobody is marginalized? No ethnic group, no state, because states are the basic uh, units now of representation, the of equality, as it were, because it's in states that you have every state, no matter how tiny, no matter how big, every state has only one governor, every state has only three senators. And uh, small as a state, as my local government, the local government I had it as chairman in 1996-97, is uh, probably bigger than quite a few states in, in terms of size down south, and uh, certainly bigger than some states even up north in terms of population. But uh, I was only chairman of that state, of that local government that now has been broken into two. But uh, so, so because of that, this, 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 this geographical demarcations have given us an opportunity to be represented, to, to, not, to, to not be, to not, to not genuinely speak of marginalization. You understand? And when you have, with your 
with your with your with, with this constitution that you have contraction or something something some call it i i think it's not a contraption it's a well crafted thing it may not be the best thing but it is what we have and uh, it's for us to, to to do whatever we want to do with it later but the constitution says apart from each state having, having a governor each state having three senators each state having a given each 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 uh, number of of uh, po- each, each each populace like like there 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 is a gauge that is used to define which area gets a member of house of representatives some local governments have one like my local government some local governments uh, two local governments have one some Mr. Has- Gwangwa, sir. Yeah. I'm sorry yes. to interject, but, but the question is, we understand the system of government that you're trying to explain, but currently groups and organizations I, are still calling for the balkanization. I got so you. Is it that this uh, marginalization is not a valid reason? I got your question perfectly. I am coming to it. Okay. I wanted be solid to have us clearly understand what marginalization is and what we have, which is not marginalization. Right. Is what the American blacks have had and still have in most cases, what the Red Indians have, what the people of uh, the, the Pharaoh had, what people in Afghanistan had when the Americans were in charge for 20 years, what People in um, where in, is it Burma have some people have in Burma, which some have in Kashmir. You understand that is marginalization, which some have in even in Yemen. You are either um, of this sect of Islam or you are marginalized. You don't have any rights, more or less, which which exists in many other communities that refuse to, to behave true to rules of the game, rules of engagement that they signed to. They signed that say every human being is born free as members of the United Nations or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So with that understanding, with everyone having a minimum of a minister, right? With the the insistence on uh, sp- geographical spread in whatever is done. If you have a president from the north, you must have a vice president from the south. If you have a president from the south, you must have a vice president from the north. It doesn't matter whether it's north um, central, northwest, northeast, or southwest, or southeast, or south south. It is still south or north. These are clear designs that address the issue of marginalization. Now, we have these shouts about uh, wanting to break away that we hear. These shouts by the IPOB people. These shouts by this, this uh, even the, the, the what? The, the noises in Europe land recently by Yugoho and uh, the Amochakun and whatever. They, they, are, they are simply, in my view, they are misrepresented to the masses and they are, they are deliberately manipulated by the elites of those areas, whether in the North, the Southwest or the Southeast, deliberately manipulated for political purposes, for political gain. These things get ramped up only after the second year of any term. The first year is invariably quiet after the elections, after uh, the courts have done their thing, after, uh, after the, the incumbents at the federal level or at the state level, or even at the local level have, have taken place, have, have taken their seats. Because at that period, those who have been defeated 
are too close to the, to, to the time of defeat for them to be able to raise their heads. The only place they raise their heads at will be at the courts. And the courts are not, unfortunately, not uh, helping matters. But uh, mm. be that as it may, for that period, the, 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 the noises about uh, I am marginalized, you are marginalized, he's marginalizing me, don't, don't seem to see the light of day in the, in the beginning of tenuous. Because, because mainly at that time, no matter what marginalized group you claim you represent, the marginalized group would be busy working to see how it can get the maximal use of the government that is in place, unfortunately. Our elites are not sincere about service. They are more concerned about the benefits, the benefits of office. The elites okay. are the problem. So the noises about marginalization, the noises about we want to break away are only ramped up, as I said, when we pass this, the, 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 the uh, we, reach, we reach or pass the two-year mark. Because the, from the two-year mark, you are, you are now going into elections. After, after, from May next year, as I always say, no month is repeated, but in a new government all over the country. Okay. Um, you understand? All right. So, 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 right. so when you, and, and, and this, is, this is confirmed solidly by what happened last, uh, was it last Monday? When the president, General Bahari, paid a visit to Imo State. In Imo State, every significant elite was, was there. Elite of Imo and elite of the Southeast was, was there to receive it. Even if the general uh, reception was not um, impressive, and it will not be because of the, the, the mistakes of the leading elite, in my view, who kowtowed to, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the ill-advised and ill-informed pr um, uh, pressures of the younger uh, elite who are behind IPOB and uh, the calls for an Igbo nation. You can't, it's not in their, it's, it's not in the best, of, best interest of the, of the leading elite, not even of the guys talking about IPOB. It's not in the interest of, the Yorubas for Igbo to be crying about marginalization and wanting to break away. Because even if he breaks away, he would now end up like with you. If anyone breaks away now, he would end up like uh, Benin Republic or Niger Republic or Chad or Cameroon or Southern Sudan or Ghana. He would, he would now be an entity that will now continue to have to relate with those areas that he has always been relating with. And uh, we, are, we, are, we are so intertwined in terms of relationships. Here in Kano, we have what we call, what is called Little London in, in Piney South. It is a purely Igbo settlement. And uh, it is literally in the city, near the airport, at the, by, by, right at the neck of the major entry point by air of Kano right by the export processing zone in Pioneer South, in Kano. And uh, it, it is an offshoot of another colony, the Sabungari colony, the Sabungari of Kano, where it is Igbos principally, and Yorubas and other ethnicities, mainly those who are not Muslims, but quite a sizable number of Muslims who are in that area. and. Uh, Many, if you, if you ask them to go back to Igbo land, they wouldn't even know where to begin. And, uh, and uh, you are saying you want Biafra. And if and some may say he wants, he wants Yoruba land. And uh, up here, some people are saying, uh, we have not had the benefits of the government that we voted for, that we fought for all these years. For 12 years, we are fighting to have Buhari become president, and he is now president. 
and uh, the benefits are more discernible for those in the southwest and those in the southeast and the south south as it were we don't even we it's only now that we are having promises of the rail line from kaduna to kano it's only now we are we are trying to see the to the completion uh, hopefully hopefully before 2023 again of the road network from abuja to kano it is it is only now we are hearing about uh, the 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 gas pipe pipeline it's now we are and, and there, there there are so many things and uh, and 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 and, and, and uh, we, we we are worried when at a time when the man the north voted for and supported to become president of Boston led an onslaught against the north when he became president the south the southwest that did not vote for him got the best of the deal even if uh, uh, they were not too happy they realized the benefits of it as one of the soil we up here don't see the benefit of having a son of the soil we don't and in 6 years of government by buhari it is only from the north that ministers have been removed if if my memory serves right okay maybe okay there was the, this uh, um what do you call it, the finance minister i think it was just moved the what, what's her name the yoruba finance minister kemi and kemi 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 she was removed I, but i think she resigned actually right she wasn't removed she resigned and uh, and uh, but here midway into the second term we have kano the home base of the president the of the major committee from the cpc bahari party our party there no 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 from minister of agriculture the other person is masari the governor of katsina from the north they are the two who 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 inked their, the, the the signatures to merge the apc the mpp and the ac with the splinter group of the pdp and the splinter group of the abga right and they form the apc and this man only became minister after four years and this man has been removed two years into his tenure and uh, another man who was also in cpc who was a candidate of cpc the minister of power was removed two years into his tenure and uh, will be told is because of performance if you're talking about performance for me i will say uh, our good friend uh, amiti has not performed because i have not rail line coming to kanu of okay course, I've, um I've, mr gongaso yes sorry sorry i have to stop you sorry i have to stop you now i just want to invite the public to the conversation remember that you can join the conversation simply by raising up your digital hand and i'll try to accommodate as much questions and comments as possible now before you give me your analysis of um, the ministers you just talked about appointment the president appointment do you really believe that um the president has really um applied federal character in his um appointment of his ministers his contracts and the rest of them or and do you also believe that this is based on competence also and not any form of marginalization to some ethnic group oh so, oh so, uh, certainly if if you know if you know general mohammed bari from his days as uh, as uh, as a military as as a commander as uh, as governor as minister he has always been a law and order person he he would never be the one to to break the rules uh at least not himself some may on his behalf whether he knows it or not but uh in his in in, in his uh, in his in his way of thinking from what i this is i know of uh, him and i've heard from those who know him whenever he delegates he delegates absolutely and uh, and he has done that he gave every state a minister is that 
not federal character. He not only gave everything a minister, he chose Osimbajo, a Christian, as a pastor, as his vice president, when many, like myself in those days, were rooting for, for a more rooted politician then. Thank God Osimbajo appears to have picked up, become quite a capable politician. But uh, but at that time, the 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 the, the, the most uh, the most popular choice was the leader of the of the Asian group, the Jagaban, Bolatinubu, Center Bolatinubu, because but because he was a Muslim, General Buhari refused to pick him as uh, vice president. That is fairness, and uh, at the same time. Time. Hello. Are we on? Hello. Oh my God. Hello. 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 Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. We're okay. hearing you. Go on. So, 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 okay. So, 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 as I seen, as as a, as a, because he wasn't a politician. If I was General Bahari in 2015. If, if I was to speak for him, I would have insisted he picked Bola Tinubu. And maybe the government would have even been a better government in the sense that at least there was one full-time, proper, capable and competent politician. The general is not a politician, he's a military politician. Tinubu is a politician. Because he was a politician, that's why he was able to hold on to one state out of six in the Southwest and to take over all the states and to mold the ACN into a fighting force that on realizing it could not make it on its own, on realizing the atheist of, of being in the wilderness, that was when there was no fairness, really, in my view. The years after, 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 the years after uh, Obasanjo, they were most unfair years for, for certain parts, for the Yoruba um, in particular, in my view. Because then you had uh, Eradua as president, you had, um, uh, I'll let you can say, you had uh, Jonathan as vice president, you had uh, uh, who as uh, SGF, I knew, I believe you had uh, can give it as SGF at a time, and then someone else can't remember who, and, and then and then you had who was speaker, the speaker was not Yoruba, I think, in Nanado's days, and uh, again in uh, uh, in uh, in the days of Jonathan. But now the, 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 the demographics are much changed. You have, uh, you have equal representation. You have people, people being appointed on the basis of the state they come from. Not necessarily religion, just like Johnson did in his constitutional conference uh, days when um, he was uh, misguided into, into, in, 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 into Sharpen and certain differences that do not exist up north into picking minorities of minorities, religious and uh, ethnic, in areas that were not really, really uh, po heavily populated by by those representatives. But 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 in this case, apart from appointments, political appointments. Other appointments that are not that are not really political, but are still within the purview of the presidency, are appointments generally that are made um, through promotion, as it were. You are either uh, you are either in the army or in the 
judiciary or in the custom service or in uh, the immigration service or, or wherever. And, 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 and you get promoted by rank to, to, to whatever position. So, so in my view, the president, uh, I'm not defending him. I, have no, uh, I don't have much reason to defend him because I'm not in APC. I am in PRP and uh, I am of the view, the APC and the PDP are the greatest mistakes of Nigerians. And um, unless Nigerians wake up and do something about them and look for an alternative, Nigerians are, are doomed to the recurrent cycles we have of agitations for um, self-determination, agitations for um, for breakups, agitations for this, agitations for that, because they, 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 as they are configured, they are not political parties that have the interests of the people. The APC was the one that came up with that change mantra, much like he came when he came to replace the military. Unfortunately, with a military man in a civilian uh, dress um, and with a military mindset, but uh, it was still change of a sort in those days. And APC came with that thought too. But then the 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 roguery of the PDP uh, and all the wrong ways, in my view. What you have now is. Uh, is the PDP in APC? Of course, the with, with a little difference, the, with, with, with with a little powerful difference, I must say that at least in these days, even if people are not tried for are not tried for corruption, corruption is accepted as corruption, and stealing is known as corruption, unlike in previous days. But then we need to. We need to, to, to go beyond this. That's my take. Augusta. I have bored you for so long. Okay. Let me let me, let me continue. Hello? Yeah, unfortunately. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello? We're offline. Yeah, uh, um unfortunately Augusta is um is off. I think there's a problem with it, with her network. Uh, we have a hand now that want to ask a question. Joe Paul, could you unmute yourself and uh, ask your question, please? We are already unmuted. Exactly. Thank you so much. My name, as you said, is Joe Paul. Uh, Mr. Kabiru, thank you for the uh, little insight you're giving to us. I have a question, my brother, my friend. In the distribution of political posts in the National Assembly, can you really say, number one, that all the geopolitical zones were equitably represented, number one? And in the appointment of the security chiefs and the all other security agencies in Nigeria, can you boldly say that this, this government distributed the appointment equitably if you are defending that there is no section that is marginalized. That's my question, please. All right, um, Madam Paul, um, thank you very much. Uh, I, I hope you joined us right from the beginning, did yeah, you? From, if, if... Yeah, from the beginning, I've seen your analysis. Okay, if, okay. If, if you have, I'm sure you'd uh, you'd appreciate where I'm coming from. I had to define marginalization. I didn't do a dictionary definition. I did a practical definition. The Jews, the Israelites of uh, the period of Moses, are uh, the typical marginalized. The American blacks, the American Red Indians, the 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 Shiites in some places, Sunnis in some places, are the typical marginalized. Right. Yes, South, I know, but I have, I have the privilege and, of going you know, to so, the, so, so with, that, with that with that as background, right? I I don't believe 
one bit that anybody can sincerely say he's marginalized in terms of an ethnic group. If you say a class is marginalized, the, the downtrodden class, the masses of Nigeria are marginalized. That I agree. If you say the, because actually there is no middle class in Nigeria, there is only those at the very top, those with lots of money, those who are in government, utilizing lots of money and resources of government, and others, or those who have been in government and are now out of government, who made money out of government, unfortunately. And then right. the other you half. Question. I think that you are avoiding I, my I, question. I, I, I am not evading it. I am not known for evasion. <laughs> Please. I'm just trying to contact things. As I'm saying, we cannot, we cannot sincerely say as an ethnic group or as a religious group, or maybe even religious groups might argue they are marginalized. The Shiites can say they are marginalized to a certain extent. I, I'm not a Shiite, I don't um, uh, subscribe to their creed, but but I if they say they're marginalized. In Kaduna in particular, I can understand, I can agree. In, uh, by their handling of their leader, in, by this government, I can agree. But even so, facts of what happened will come to play to justify, was it justified marginalization or not, right? So now, to go to your question of the National Assembly distribution of positions, Mm -hmm. uh, is any section marginalized? I don't. I don't. I don't believe so. You you have a senate president from the north. You have a senate. You have a deputy from the south. You have a, a national, uh, a house of reps speaker from the north or uh, from the south. You have a deputy speaker from the north. You have various uh, house leaders representing their parties. In this case, it's up to the parties. You understand? And then... Well, and I don't parties, understand this because I was talking about the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria, not about North and South. If you Just like about, the previous my, regime, uh, the my, regime of uh, Obasa, Joyara, Dua, and Jonathan. We'll so if again. you compare the description of post, you will definitely discover that my question is being avoided. No, I am not. I, I am not. In, I'm not in government. I've never been in in the federal system from all my life. I've always been a local. Okay. What, what do you talk about the polit of the security appointments in the security uh, chiefs and all of that? Uh, yeah, what do you say about uh, that? Uh, as it affects marginalization now, and the first of all first of all to conclude what you said i'm avoiding in my view marginalization it should not necessarily be about geopolitical zones yes there are geopolitical zones but they are not constitutional they are only uh, an agreement kind of that was uh, presented to Nigerians at the 1990, was it 95 Constitutional Conference? By, it was presented by Ikwemi and Eradua. They are the guys who contrived it. Ikwemi to, and Eradua to placate those, they, those, those who say they are marginalized because of their race or because of their ethnic group or because of their zones or whatever. But as I said, that is fake marginalization concept, a fake marginalization concept in my view. The principal marginalization that we should talk about should not be beyond two or three. One, the North and the South, broadly speaking, Muslims and non-Muslims. And then those in government with the results of government that they use and misuse, and those who are friends of government who are in business, or in uh, hunky-punky businesses, picking 
the, 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 the best of the best from what those in government facilitate for them. That is one group, marginalizing everybody else. Marginalizing you, Paul, marginalizing me, marginalizing the masses of Nigerians, marginalizing the, the dumb food driver, marginalizing the taxi driver, marginalizing the laborer, marginalizing everybody else, marginalizing the market woman, marginalizing women and men who are not part of the eating of the national resources that are ours as, mem as, as Nigerians, that are ours as members of a given state. This issue of zones, I agree, they have been corrupted. We have Northwest, we have Northeast, we have Southwest, we have Southeast and South South. We have North Central, but principally we have South as an entity with, 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 uh, with, with some kind of an identity largely and the North as an entity with a kind of that largely if you understand so, 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 so if you talk about and you stay uh, in the security apparatus in the security apparatus for instance you say you say certain people certain people are left out if you are the president sir if you are the president Paul sir and you are you 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 and, and you want to remain president you will import someone not from a, a group that you are comfortable with not a person you're comfortable with if i am present and i am fulani not house of fulani i'm fulani from house of land or fulani house of fulani land i will i will gladly pick you i'll gladly pick ikea ikea when you because i know him i will I will pick Paul Ejimi. I will pick uh, people I know, Dennis, Anes. I will pick people I know, people I relate with, or people recommended to me by people I know to be my head of the my head of the army, my head of uh, whatever enforcement agency. Because if you don't do that, you wake up and find yourself the same way that. Uh, uh, if, if, look, at, look at Guinea his, his, his boy, the guy he brought down is the guy who sent him out of course because he, he also broke the rules he went for a third term which was unpopular which was unreasonable the good thing about democracy is that there are term limits and we have to understand we have to appreciate why do we have crisis of marginalization we have them because leading elite those 5-10% of Nigerians Maybe five percent or less. One yeah, to Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. They will create the sector. Hello. You are not very. Can you hear me? Yes, there. Can you hear me? Yes, there. Can you hear me? Yes, there. Can you that you have tried to I'm going to call on the next person now. Um, Muhammad Ali Baba, I can see your hand up. Please try to keep your submissions um, in order a minute if possible. Muhammad Ali Baba, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, you please go ahead. I said, yeah. <laughs> try you. to keep your submissions under a minute because we are almost out of time. Okay, thank you very much. I think I will want to align completely with uh, Malan Gongwezu on his analysis about this marginalization. This concept has always been a tool in the hands of the elites to ensure divide and rule. The marginalization effective pragmatically is between the haves and the have nots, the ruling elite and the poor masses, and they cut across all strata of this society. So when people align ordinary privilege appointment, just like you said, between 5% of the ruling elites and use it to, you know, hoodwink people or, or, you know, you know, do propaganda about marginalization. They end up misleading these people who ordinarily are supposed to be united 
in fighting their oppressors. These oppressors use this tool to keep them permanently on each other's throat so that they will continue with their exploitation. One classic example I used to you know, mention regularly is the relationship between uh, ex-president Jonathan and the NSA. NSA is a, is a royal blood from the caliphate who, so from rumors have it, uh, wanted even, uh, was aspiring to be the sultan if uh, uh, Jonathan had come back. Yet this man, this, and the sultan is the ruler of the Muslim elites, the entire Muslims in this north. But this guy had no qualms diverting the resources that was meant to fight Boko Haram, which was decimating the Muslims, particularly in the north. He had no qualms diverting that fund to, to campaign as campaign slush fund for uh, President Jonathan from the Creeks because their interests are aligned. So this issue of marginalization consistently has been just what the elites use to continue to divide the masses against them. See what happened in, in Kano recently. Even the most, you know, you know, the most acerbic critics of the president, people like the governor of uh, Taraba, you, we all read in the social media the kind of gifts he gave uh, the president's son on his wedding. And everybody who is who was at that wedding. But immediately they returned. They started, I mean, some of them started the same rhetorics that they were singing before that wedding. But when the chiefs are down, they were all united. So the earlier most of us realized that the so-called marginalization among elites just for mere privilege appointments, and when people resort to it anytime they lose those privileges, we need to rise above that and realize that these people are united. They all know true uh, uh, you know, allegiance to any region, tribe, or religion, but their own narrow interest of exploitation. So I think that is what Thank we need so to much. focus on. There's nothing like uh, regional so or ethnic marginalization. It's Thank you so much, Dr. Ibrahim. Thank you so much. Let me just go to the next person, Wang Pam Jr. Pam Jr. I have asked you to unmute, so um, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Hi, right, thank you very much, Augusta. Okay. Yes. Yes, I'll make it brief. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to appreciate the guest and uh, his analysis, I think we have, we have gotten more light. Uh, however, I'd like to, would like to have more light um, on, and while he was responding to the previous speaker, he said uh, that the zones, uh, the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria are not constitutional. So, but when we talk of marginalization, we should look at North, South, uh, or the Muslim, non-Muslim, and uh, having said that, um, I would like to ask him his view on the positions or offices within the, the country, ministerial appointments, amb ambassadorial appointments of the current administration. Does our guest uh, think that uh, um, the appointments have been skewed towards a particular religious group? And does he think that the resource control being skewed in that way also would have an impact on the security situation we are facing today? That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Just before I allow the guest to rest. Come again. Let me call on Obadiah David. You want me to? Obadiah David, I saw your hand up. Daddy. 
The sound here is not uh, friendly. No, oh, um, it's uh, Gwango, so I'll ask you to pause the minute. Let's call on the next person so you can just um, react at once. Obadiah David. Maybe he has challenges with uh, sound, like some. If the invited person is not available, call the next person. So we'll be moving. Hello, Elder Tango, please. Anytime you keep around the globe. Um, I like to say something, and what he said, it's part of what he said, because I still keep on my point. There's my sensation all over, not only one tribe, really. And then uh, our present situation now, as part we tell, we tell you that Nigerian problem now is, is out of tribe, it's out of it, it, ethics or anything. What, will, what is happening in Nigeria now is the uh, wish with something masses for. Oh. The poor people are the victim. The only two tribes exist now, as Nigeria stands now. Only two tribes are seen now in Nigeria. The poor tribe and the rich tribe. Nigeria has no other tribe. The, the rich unite, but the poor are not united. That's why they cannot balance power. That's why power cannot balance. All this uh, religion, uh, ethical, uh, I believe this, I believe that is a political game weapon. They use it. When they are in trouble, when they are okay, they know nobody. I've been saying it all the time. When they are comfortable, they know nobody. They know nobody. The situation in the country. I've been I've been traveling for the past for 17 years, leaving the country, coming back, going out. The joy of travel is when you travel, you go back home. But now nobody's willing to go home again. But the situation is bad. And these people don't have any water in their hearts or what are in their head to do things good. And all, most of them we come to Europe, see good life, see good living, how people live simple and, and, and feel okay. But I, the, them, the, them made everything, survival of the fittest. The masses are the victim. If the masses can join hand, forget tribe, well, why part all these rogues one day and we have a good nation? What Nigeria did now is say, either we go to the peace or we will call for revolution. Because if the system works, nobody will ask where, where uh, Kabiru is from, where Ayugochuku is from, where this man is from. That's the problem we are having. All this agitation has risen, and the poverty, people are poor, people are too down. Poverty contributed to that agitation. Three square meals is problem, no good road, no good water, no good health care. No, nothing is free. What is government at all at all? Government cannot provide anything to the society. Here, yeah, we have money, we have everything to make this okay, but the greediness of the people, if somebody went, went in, into a hospital here, yeah, just like a hotel, they feed you, give you whatever you want, you feel free. Yes, yes security is okay. Light is problem, water is problem, and we're talking about everything. Let the masses get up one day and flush these people out. Tribal and religion is, 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 is just a joker, a joker they are holding to be, to, to be freeing all, all Nigeria together. Time of wedding, they go together. Time of a party, they go together. They live fine. Imagine, uh, don't you see Buhari's daughter's party? More than 50 private jets in Kano. Planted in Kano in one airport. Who is fooling who? I, I, I moved around. Buhari's question was my GOC for division. I know I know Buhari. The time of our Bush exercise, Buhari, uh, Kone Yusuf was a uh, 9th brigade. Buhari came, Colonel Yusuf was hosting the Bush exercise. 
as a Biokuta. Buhari, being the brigade commander, come, join us. Buhari was a good soldier. A good soldier. With leg, we moved from a Biokuta to Lalante, South Star Flight Town. So, so when things are changing, even when Buhari was coming new, I was one of the say, oh, he will be a good soldier. Will be, although Buhari, Buhari is too religious. That's the only fault I have. It's, it's uh, okay, thank you. My, my, my brother. So what, what we do now as Nigerians, let us carry campaign for the masses to round up and unite because the, the rich have united, uh, have united. Let the masses unite and flush them out. It, it happened in, Thank you so much, Elder Ogochiku. It, 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 it happened all over the world, even in Europe here. Yeah. There's a time they kill all their kings and have a better life. Thank you, Thank you so they, much, um, Elder Thank you so much, Elder Ogochiku. Let us hear from our guests. Let our guests um, react. No um, Mr. Gwangwaso, you've yep. heard what um, our participants have said. Would allow you to react now. Yeah, we we had uh, we had three contributors, right? I said we had three contributors, right? Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Alibaba. And and uh, uh, Pam Junior and Elder Ugochuku. I I'm, I thank you very much for your observations. Fortunately, um, it appears we are more or less on the same page. Like uh, even Junior said. When he was talking about uh, the the three, the six geopolitical political zones, um, he still did ag appreciate that uh, we are more enlightened now about the background to marginalization. Um, I, I, what I'd rather say is a definition of marginalization. You have to have something to gauge yourself with or to. If you want to know your height, you get something that is taller that you can lean to and, uh, de de and, 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 and agree, okay, this is how tall I am or how short I am, right? Now, we have successfully addressed that and uh, I hope we are comfortable with it. Then we are again on the same page, generally, uh, like with Ugochuku, Elder Ugochuku, it appears it's kind of Ugochuku or General Ugochuku. Uh, general. general, sir. I'm not a general. Uh, oh, uh, oh, well. General. I, 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 I'm not a senior officer. I'm not a rank in Nami, but I serve with all this uh, in, in the cradle of power. You are the ones who give birth to the, uh, to the officers. <laughs> Without you, there are no officers. I know a lot I, of I know. I, think I know those because mean. I. Because in the newsroom, I was, uh, I was, I was other ranks like you, mm -hmm. rising to become editor, to become editor in chief or managing director. As such, I do know there are people who came in. I was a sub editor, and uh, because they had to finish this again, and uh, it didn't bother me. It only bothered me because the system run by stupid people didn't understand that you didn't have to have a degree to be able to impart, and. Uh, and, and anyway, you, 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 you train them and they can't even cope and they end up being the bosses. So, 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 so to, to come back to, to your assessment, to, to, to your analysis, which, which strengthens my understanding, which is the same understanding of Ali Baba, we have only two tribes, two races and two religions in Nigeria. The tribe of the rich, the religion of the rich, the race or ethnic group of the rich, the rich and powerful people in government and their friends and uh, those they favor and those who were in government. Because incidentally, that has become very apparent. If you are in government, uh, you are uh, always in government. I was in, the, in 1996 as uh, a local government chairman elected. Uh, and uh, I was in government peripherally as uh, as uh, a director of press affairs in, in 1990, 
and uh, and and, and what the government like they government government um I am class rich I'm not of the race of rich or the of the rich I'm of the religion of the people and I understand it is clear that the elite the elite who don't have passes to government who don't have passes to the dinners of the high and mighty either in bichi or in in bichi kanu or in 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 abuja in the, in the in the villa they are the ones who strengthen the super elite the 3% or maybe less than 3 but maybe even 1% actually maybe less than 1% actually maybe 0.3% that's actually there because you can count them you can if you if you if you if you were to put them in uh, i was at a meeting in 1996 general abacha was president okay, mr mr gwango was so yes so i'm i'm are you with me are you with me hello oh are we uh, okay okay as i was saying uh, i i i i i i i'm glad we are we are all more or less on the same page that there are only two groups what do you want okay what over we are Yes, by way of closing, I am summarizing. We do not have any marginalization. If there is any marginalization, it is marginalization of everyone in Nigeria. No matter his tribe, no matter his region, no matter his geopolitical zone, no matter his state, no matter his uh, ethnic group. he is marginalized by those who are in government by those who are their friends who work with them to continue to recycle them in government in kano for instance from 1999 to date we have had only three governors 1999 to date three governors we have had konkoso for four years then we had shekaro i was his party chairman who ushered him into office we threw konkoso out then and he was there for eight years and we were even friends by the time he became governor and i was the chairman fighting from the front and then konkoso came back after eight years of shekarov and he was there for four years smart guy that he was i was in cpc bahari's party but then he invited me onto his government and i was in his government for four years almost four years before we parted ways again and we met in apc and then his bo- his his deputy who was his deputy in the first term became the governor he is now governor for 6 years and he aims to be governor for another 2 years by god's grace and then he okay. is aiming vice president or whatever so mm-hmm. the same us we the elites those of us who have no who 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 are who are not made of stone as tough we refuse to realize that we have to work together we have to pull together as politicians as journalists as uh, uh, as dumpo drivers as whoever as lecturers as doctors as lawyers we have to work together like what you guys in elomba are doing this kinds of engagements should be ramped up to educate us the elite first the second class elite those who are in the same boat as the masses those who are not sure of having three square meals those are sure of Thank having money so much, to, pay for, to pay for their for for their data who are not sure of 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 of, of paying for the school fees of their kids or for medical care or or, or even or paying nepa bills do you understand those who are squeezed by the tax man they have to band together to now insist on ensuring that quality representation at all levels happen in your immediate locality that is what will solve our problem and up north thank you so just, much um <laughs> by way of information up north in particular in kano last time when dr obadia malafia malafia was uh, uh, was your uh, was our guest your guest i recall telling you in 2015 to 2019 the young man who was 
member of the Federal House of Reps representing Kano City, representing the Emir of Kano, representing everyone who mattered principally in Kano City. His father was an Igbo man who walked into Kano. His elder brother was my head boy in my secondary school when I was in Form 2. He was the head boy of the man who is now Emir of Kazori, who took over his head boy after him. Thank you so much, Mr. Gwangoto. He was Igbo. Uh, we have spent we have spent as much time as we know. I hope uh, I'm I'm, so more, much. I'm more grateful for the time and uh, you are kind uh, listening here and all of my good yes. friends that I on the platform. I well, hope engagement continues. Thank you so much.